your hand and hold me still I'm fearfully and wonderfully made I'm fearfully and wonderfully made I'm fearfully Greetings once more, brethren, in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Greetings to Rock Christian Church, Port Elizabeth. Greetings to all the members of the body of Christ, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. I trust that you are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Well, it is with great excitement that I bring this word of encouragement and word of challenge uh, to you right now and i'm excited as i went through the scriptures uh once more and i was you know so thrilled and so excited you know to share the word of god and to just remind us about who we are as members of the body of christ as children of the most high god who are we for real and what are we to do well uh please come with me to the book of matthew chapter 5 verse 13 to 16. We shall take our text from here uh, in for the next few minutes as we encourage each other in the word of the Almighty God. Matthew chapter 5, 13 to 16, it reads as follows. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light up a lamp and put it under the basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Three key parts that I would like you to please take note of. The first one is, you are the salt of the earth. This is the Lord Jesus speaking to his disciples and speaking to you and me this morning. It says, the word of God says here, you are the salt of the earth. And then number two, it says, you are the light of the world. And then it says, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. And then the last part says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Bazalana, it is very important for us to note, even before I get into this text, that light is needed and light is very relevant in times of darkness or where there is darkness. You don't need light when there is light. You need light when there is darkness. In other words, if there was a time where the church of Jesus Christ where you and me were necessary and relevant and needed, it is now. In these times of disaster, in these times of trouble, in these times of ultra darkness, sickness, and chaos all over. This is the time of the church. This is not a time for the church to watch things happening, to hide or to pause with unbelievers, sit and watch and wait and just hope that things are going to just come right. No, this is time for the church to arise. This is the time for the church to actually shine their light. You know, in these few verses, the Lord Jesus is addressing his disciples and he, he, he gives them or he gives their function a title. He says to his disciples, look guys, you are the light of the world and you are the salt of the earth. I want you to note this because Jesus doesn't say here, he doesn't say here, you have the light, and he doesn't say you have the salt, but he says you are the light and you are the salt. Of course, I have a car at home, but as I, I am not the car, I have the car, I am not the car. 
So Jesus doesn't say here, you have the light. But he says, you are the light. You know, it's like having your handbag. You can have a handbag that you can perhaps sometimes even forget at home or live at home and go to town without it. But Jesus made certain to say to the disciples, you are the salt. You are the light. You don't just have it. So this morning, I would like to remind you, child of God, follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have received Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, this is your title. This is the, this is the purpose for your, for your function. You are the light. You are the salt of the earth. Beautiful scripture. You know, as I said earlier, that light is needed in a time of darkness and the salt is needed when there is something to be preserved. I want to remind us, that we are so necessary, we are so needed for such a time as this. And we are believers for such a time or in times like this. In the chaos, in all the mess that is happening, in all the pain, in all the paranoia and the fear, and all the troubled waters that the world is facing, that our cities are facing, that, that people are facing, the need for the church to arise has never been greater. Arise and pray. Arise and encourage. Arise and bring hope. I want to say it one more time. You are the light. You are the salt. Now, when the Bible talks about, uh, uh, when Jesus says to his disciples, when Jesus says to believers, you are the light of the world, he actually gives us a title that is distinct to himself as the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember the book of John chapter 8 verse 12. Jesus says there, I am the light of the world and whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. Now Jesus, as much as he said about himself that he is the light of the world and whoever follows him will never walk in darkness, Jesus then gives us the same title as Christians, as believers. He says, you too are the light of the world and you too are the salt of the earth. What is Jesus meaning here? Jesus is actually saying you are called to glorify God with your life, with the way you live, as you live your life, as you lead your life. Each and every day there is a calling, there is a need, there is an expectation upon your life as a child of God which is to actually glorify God. So that when people see you, when people watch you and me, how we live our life, how we do, how we deal with our daily dealings and daily issues, wherever we are, people look to us, people watch us, and as they watch us and as they see how we do things, then they will glorify our Father in heaven. You may ask yourself, if we are the light of the world, where do we shine this light? We are called, we are expected to shine this light wherever we are. Wherever I am, wherever I find myself in my own sphere of influence, in my own space, I am called to shine the light. As a father, I'm called to shine the light. As a pastor, I'm expected to shine the light. As a husband, I'm expected to shine my light. In my community, there is an expectation upon me to shine the light. As a man in my community, I'm expected to shine the light of the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, through your attitude at work, you are shining your light, discharging your responsibilities wherever you are. You are shining the light of God as God says you are the light. You know, in the way I treat my wife, in the way I treat my husband, I'm shining the light. In the way I'm raising my children, I'm shining the light. In the way I relate with my fellow neighbors, I'm shining the light. And so everywhere I am, you know, in the way, in the way I represent myself, in the way I dress, in the way I talk, in the way I relate with people, I'm shining the light of God. You see, as a child of God, there is no space where you actually say, now I am my own individual. I am in my private space and therefore I don't need to be the light here. Everywhere you go, you take yourself with. And therefore, wherever I am 24-7 as a child of God, I am the light and I'm supposed to show off that light. In other words, I'm supposed to show off the God colors. And I'm supposed, because people are actually watching, people are looking at me and that's what they see. If there was ever a time for the church to show off its God colors, it is right now. 
And I want to encourage you this morning. I want to challenge you right now and say, remember, child of God, remember, believer, remember, member of the body of Christ, that you are the light and you are the salt. Hallelujah. You know what? When, 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 you, when light shows up, darkness runs. Light does not negotiate with darkness. In other words, when, when, when as a believer you show up living to the standards of the word of God, living according to the word of God, fearing the things that are unbecoming and all evil, shunning all evil, hating the things God hates and loving the, thing God, the things that God loves. When you live your life like that, darkness just begins to run away from you. I've seen people in their workspace, whether they are working in the public space, in the public arena, whether they are running their own private businesses, whether the person is a teacher, a doctor, or they are employed in government. I've seen them being called by name. Some people, some would call them fundis. Some would call them zalwane. You know why? Because they have lived, they are living their lives. They are, they, 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 they are living their lives in a way that honors God. They are doing things not in the way that the world does them they do things in the way of the world and so you find them being tagged and titled in as as a fundis as a sumayel you know why because they are living the light they are actually displaying their light this is supposed to be true and consistent with every child of god when people watch you and me, they are supposed to actually see God through us. They are supposed to see the word in action through us. If the word, if it's time to love, they're supposed to look at us and see love in action. If it's time for peace, they're supposed to look to us and see peace in action. If it's time for work and excellence and discharging of duties in an excellent way, in a consistent way, they're supposed to look to us and actually see God in action through our lives you know what one thing about light is that light stands out and salt stands out if you put salt in a in a pot or in a dish or in a meal when you put salt salt stands out when you shine the light light stands out what does that mean that means that the calling and the expectation upon you and me is that of standing out we are not called to fit in we are not called to flow with the stream we are called to stand out Actually, the church and believers are called to swim against the current. And this morning, when you find yourself as, 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 as this person who is seemingly being ostracized or he who looks like they are not normal amongst other people or are even tagged and called different names and sometimes you, you, you are a bit shamed and when they look at you, you must understand that's exactly what light does. Light stands out and salt stands out. And so we are not called to fit in. We are not called to flow with the stream. That's why I'm saying even now, we are not just called to flow with everything, saying what everybody is saying, doing what everybody is doing. There, is, uh, there, are, there are things that are distinct to children of God that we are supposed to do. One of them, we are supposed to stand in the gap and pray. One of them, we are supposed to bring hope to people that are in a state of hopelessness. When people are declaring this, that and the other, especially when, when people are projecting death and disease disaster as children of god were supposed to stand and speak against those things and actually declare life where people are talking about hopelessness we're supposed to be bringing hope that's just who we are we are not called to fit in children of god do not fit in jesus was not a fitter in but jesus stood out wherever he was People saw him, people watched him, people looked up to him, and he was not just, when everyone was saying, kill, 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 Jesus would say, life, 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 life. When people were expecting death, Jesus would speak life. I remember one incident when a woman who was caught in adultery was brought before the Lord Jesus by a group of men, and everyone was ready to say, according to the law of Moses, she is supposed to be stoned. Everyone was saying, kill her, kill her, kill her. But nobody brought the man that she was in adultery with. They brought the woman right there and they were ready to stone her. And they wanted Jesus to agree with that. You know what Jesus did? The Bible says he knelt down and he began to write on the ground. And he said to them, he who has no sin, let them throw the first stone. And right there, the Bible says, all those men who had brought that woman and were ready to kill her, they began to walk away from her. Jesus always did 
things in a unique way, in a way that represented God, in a way that stood out, and he never just flowed with the crowds, and he was never one to just do that which is popular and acceptable to everyone. I want to remind us today that we are not just called for the popular, but we are called for the right things. There are things that are popular with everybody. There are things that are, that are relevant. There are things that are socially acceptable by everybody, that are norms to everyone out there. But you know what? As children of God, we are not just supposed to represent that which is popular, but we are supposed to stand for that which is right. Is it right before God? It might be popular with everybody, but is it right concerning marriage? It might be popular and acceptable to have a concubine, to have a mistress here and there, to become a babe somewhere, somehow. But is it right according to the word of God that a married man have relationships out there? Is it right for a single person to sleep around? Is it right? It might be acceptable. But is it right for a child of God to mess around, mess around, and still go and stand out and lift up holy hands uh, in the in the presence of the Lord, and yet they are busy living in, in a sinful state, which is socially acceptable. But some things that are socially acceptable are not necessarily spiritually acceptable. So as children of God, the calling and the expectation upon us is not just to flow with that which is socially acceptable, but to flow with that which is spiritually and acceptable according to the word of God. So when the Bible talks about us, being the light of the world. The Bible talks about us being those that are radically born again. Fanatics for Jesus. If there was ever a time for the church of Jesus Christ to become radically born again, it is now. To, be, to stand out for Jesus unashamedly, unreservedly, boldly declaring the very truth of the word of God, it is now. You know what? We are living in the last days. You don't have to be a rock scientist to understand that. Jesus is coming back very, very soon. We spoke about this. This was mentioned many, many years ago. But I want to tell you, looking at what is happening all around, the signs are clear. The evidence is glaring that Jesus is coming back very, very soon. So this is no time to hide. This is no time to be gray and mellow. But this is time for you to pick a side and stand out. And if you're a child of God, to understand that, you know what? I am going to shine my light no matter what. If they clap for me, so be it. If they don't clap, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to flow with what is popular, but I'm going to flow with what is right. As I bring my encouragement to a close, I want to say a few things about the salt and light. You know what? When you look at the salt and when you look at the light, you know, these seem to be saying the same thing. They seem, you know, when, when it comes to us as Christians, it's like when you say you are the light and you are the salt, it's like the same thing is being, is being mentioned here. And yet, salt and light, they have two different distinct approaches. You see, the salt operates internally and the light operates externally. You know, with salt, when it comes to salt, or salt operates internally in whatever it comes in contact with. And light operates externally. What does that mean about you and me and our calling and about who we are? This simply means that as salt operates internally, salt infiltrates, as salt gets into something, if you put it in a, in a meal, this, if you put it into meat, I love my meat, if you put it into meat, salt will, will penetrate. Salt will, the salt will infiltrate the meat. The salt will get in and will br br bring taste into the meal. And, and the salt will impact. The salt will get into that meal and bring a nice uh, palatable taste to it. What does that mean? That simply means that as the salt of the earth, as believers, we are called to infiltrate our communities. We are called to penetrate our communities. We are called to bring an impact wherever you are in that department. You are supposed to infiltrate that department with your righteousness, with your principles of truth, with your principles of integrity. You are supposed to penetrate if there is chaos in that division. When you come in, you infiltrate that. You don't have to be shouting out loud, but with your character, with your composure, with your demeanor, you get in there. You infiltrate that community. You intercede for the people. You pray for them. You know, that, that, that salt gets in there and that salt begins to preserve. 
you know where we used to slaughter a lot of sheep back in the in the day especially back home in the trans sky after you, after you slaughter that sheep you take the skin and you and you throw it there and then you throw some salt you put it in the sun and you throw some salt in it the moment you if you put it up there in the sun with no salt on it it begins to rot but if you throw it in there put it in the sun but you put salt on it the salt preserves that skin it doesn't rot and that's exactly what we are as children of god you see take away children of god from this world there would be a lot of rot and there would be a lot of mess in this world i know child of god they don't give us too much credit for it and frankly they really don't need to give us credit i'm declaring right now you take away children of god you take away born again believers from this world from every city from this country from this world there would be chaos this country would be a mess you see as believers we are like brakes in a car you don't have to be clapping for the brakes you don't have to be celebrating the brakes you don't have to be worshiping the brakes to know that brakes are necessary Take off the brakes from that car. That car will crash and kill and destroy everyone in it. Children of God are exactly like that. You see, as the salt of the earth, we are the people that are preserving the earth. So that if you think there is rot on this earth, try removing believers away. That is why even now, I keep, I keep reminding the church that let us not forget who we are. Yes, we are in a situation of a pandemic. There are declarations, there are expectations, there are projections. But you know what? We are called to preserve, to preserve lives, to reverse the irreversible, to declare life. We are called to speak against that which the world is speaking and declaring. If they say, as so many deaths as children of God, we are there to reverse all of that. God has given us that responsibility. Remember the Bible says, let your light shine your light before men that they may see your good deeds, they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So we are the ones that are expected to preserve, preserve life with our declarations, preserve life with our prayers, preserve the places that we are at with our very lifestyle. So the salt infiltrates. And what about the light? The light radiates. The light is glaring. The light is bright. So the light, as the light, as children of God, as the light, we are called to bring hope. We are called to set the standard. We are called to shine far and wide. As wide and as far as we can reach. As the light, we are the ones that are called to raise the banner, the banner of righteousness and declare the way of Christ. So, when Jesus spoke to his disciples and said, you are the salt, and then said, you are the light, Jesus was simply saying, you are called to infiltrate and you are called to radiate. If I were to make an example, I would say, if, if I would use police out there, I would say that as, as, as believers, we are, we are called or we are like the police that are the, the visible policing that you see out in the streets, in their uniform, in their, in, their, in their cars, visible for everyone. But at the same time, you also have the undercover policing. You have the detective police that are wearing clothes like everyone. That is why they become effective. They are effective because they are seen publicly, shining brighter, everybody seeing and that visible policing is very necessary because it drives away the thieves it scares away the robbers but at the same time you also get the 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 the, the, the private detectives you also get the undercover police what are they doing they are there where everyone is as paul would say to the jews i became a jew to the greeks i became a greek in other words that we we we, we, we are not just working in the public space proclaiming out loud but also in our private domain in our individual space we are working the works of god as a as a nurse i'm working the work of god as the doctor i'm working the works of god as a teacher i'm working the work of god i'm working in my own space but at the same time we stand out on mountain tops we put out loud speakers we pitch up tents and we declare on crusades that jesus is lord so jesus was actually saying i want you to stand on mountain tops and shout loud because it is necessary be the light be the hope to everybody but at the same time i want you through your life to become the salt to 
penetrate, to infiltrate with your integrity, with your moral uprightness, to declare, to live the life of Christ. This morning, I want to encourage you. Jesus says, you are the light. Jesus says, you are the salt. And all we need to do, we don't need to go find the light somewhere. We don't need to go find the salt somewhere. Jesus says, you are the light. Just like I mentioned it earlier, I have a car at home, but I am not the car. But Jesus says, you don't have the light, but Jesus says, you are the light. And this scripture closes by saying, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds. And when they see the deeds that you do, they will glorify your Father in heaven. May the Lord help us even in this season to shine our light. May the Lord grant us wisdom. Pray to the Lord. Ask him for wisdom on how to best shine my light. In the social media space, how do I shine my light, Lord? Lead me in the right way. In my workplace, how do I shine my light? Lord, during lockdown, how do I shine my light? Because the shining of the light part is not limited to pandemics or to, to happy days. The Lord calls us to shine our light in happy days and the Lord calls us to shine our light even in bad days. May you be encouraged this morning. May you be challenged this morning. And above all, may you be reminded of your calling and who you really are. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. Shine wherever you are. You are not a secret to be kept. Go public with the word of God. Go public with the things of God. Shine where you are. In Jesus' mighty name. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you so much for this word. A reminder about our mandate. My God, a reminder about our calling. About who we are in you. Jesus, you give us this title, Lord. That is distinct even to you. Light of the world and salt of the earth. Grant us boldness, Lord. Grant us courage to shine our light. Lord, in the name of Jesus, may we not put our light under the bowl. May we not hide in any corner. But Lord, may you help us to come out and become the light. Lord, we are not going to hide with everyone and cry with people as they cry. But we're going to stand out as the church and as believers. And we're going to be radically born again. We will use every tool. We will use every platform to shine our light. I pray, my God, that every believer who hears me right now, in the name of Jesus, will be reminded will be challenged and will be propelled to do exactly that which Jesus called them to do which is to shine their light in Jesus mighty name. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord smile over you and the Lord grant you peace on every side as you shine your light my brother as you become that salt and that preservative in this life in Jesus mighty name. Bless you. Amen.